What's up YouTube? My name's Quickie, welcome back to the channel. So we had Steve O down at the weekend and we figured out a load of stuff that I could be getting on with and what I need to get. So we're just getting on with it. That's the old back gear that I've just had out the lathe. <laughs> that needs to go off to Mark Lord. Um, I'm gonna put his, um, gonna put his details in the description of this video. Cause I've had a few people asking. Come on. There we go, that'll do. I had a few people asking and he is sound as, he properly is sound. So I'll shove his details down. And if you got yourself an old Boxford especially, um, he's a blinding source of bits and just information and you know, all that sort of stuff. Right, is that dry yet? Yes it is. Right, so all I've done here, one of the jobs I need to do is to change the angle that the um, number plate came down at, because obviously the, the bike is now doing a little bit of a push up, and this was pretty much horizontal. So, there's nothing major to it. Um, I could have just cut the bracket off, moved it around and tacked it back on again. But in the end, I just elected to score the back of it with uh, the angle grinder, just like half material depth, basically because um, that way you can get like a really nice crisp bend in it so it just neatens up that inside edge rather than cutting it and sticking it on and welding it and everything else I wanted that edge there let me show you see here I've just got a nice little bend but there's there's like a nice edge down here now it's just it's a bend it's not a butt joint with weld penetration or anything else like that in it so that's why I did that did it that way easy enough to do um, and on the back it was just a case of you know run us this is the back you're never going to see it anyway but it is all dressed down but just run a bead of weld down there and then dress it all in so he basically sits on like that which is a much better angle you're going to see that that's going to be fine right we need a couple holes in here now um, here I've got some holes where the wires are going to poke through, so I just need to drill a couple holes there. Then I can bolt this up, and then we can start throwing stuff on the back of the bike. You know, just lighting and pulling the wires through and stuff. I just make sure everything goes where it needs to go, and they are going to be a complete cock to get through. <laughs>
more bits of cardboard. <laughs> this is Asbo, as you know. He's looking a little bit grubby. I've not ridden her in a few weeks. <laughs> Sacrilege, isn't it? Um, I want to get a plan together for that exhaust. I know kind of what I'm going to be doing, but I want to know what my options are basically. So I'm using Asbo as a little bit of a template because it's basically the same sort of engine, um, but it's already got a set of headers on, which I can use the basics for, for coming up for um, something um, for Jexit. I ain't copying it. <laughs> it ain't gonna look the same. If that's the case, I just would have gone and get a set of headers. But um, what I wanna do is to make a set. Now, anything that we get off this channel, be it through Teespring with people buying T-shirts or you know from the patrons chipping in and everything else, all that money is going into tooling. I don't want to go out and just buy something off the shelf that anybody else can have to stick on the bike. I want to make it, I want to make it unique. Um, so any anything that we get from doing this is going into tooling to help me build stuff for the future. And part of that is going to be two bending dies. These things here. These little bits of metal cost a bloody fortune. Um, let me show you. Uh, come on. There we go. So that's a die. Um, there is a follower, this bit here, that goes around the tube as well. Come on, come on out. That's the follower, that's the die. Um, that is 300 quid. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy money, isn't it? Um, thing is, I've got a lathe now. You'd think I could just make one. However, the diameter of this, for what I want to be doing on here, like for the frame and for the exhaust and everything else, I can't make one big enough. So the lathe's pretty much useless. <laughs> no, ain't. Um, but yeah, they cost a lot of money. Um, the thing is, um, getting bent bits of tube, especially in like, you know, stainless and all this kind of stuff. And then if you cock it up a few times and quite a lot ends up in a scrap bin, um, once you start on about doing exhaust for a couple of bikes, you're basically talking about the price of one of them. So it makes sense just to get one. Um, so what I want to do is to figure out this center line radius, start measuring up, um, I'll measure these headers as well, because basically it's the same sort of engine. I'm going to compare it to Jixi. I'm going to come up with a plan and see what dies I'm going to need. Um, pom, pom, pom. And then we're going to look into getting one, basically. I'm only getting one to do the exhaust to start off with. I ain't rich. <laughs> so the easy way is just a bit more cardboard. Um, let's get him in there. It's only rough but it is an idea. So we have a curve. What I'm hoping is I can figure out from that roughly what the center line radius is going to be. Um, I've got a compass <laughs> and I've got a ruler. You pretty much don't need anything else. Um, the idea is to get some of these dies. I'm going to be using uh, one to do all the sharper stuff for the exhaust, but then when I come to doing the frames, I'm probably going to want something else with a bit of a bigger throw to it, a bit of a bigger radius. Until I actually get to that point and I know what I'm going to need, I ain't going to be getting one. I'm just going to be getting this one for the exhaust to start off with. Um, and, you know, we'll just go from there. All right. So the opening for the exhaust port. Forty two point nine. So that's the actual opening. Um, the headers uh, on my bandit is like thirty six mil um, outside diameter on the headers itself. 
and there's obviously a collar that sits in here and goes up to this flat surface too uh, and there's a gasket and everything else to be wound into it um, tube in 35mm and dies in 35mm is a bit of an awkward thing it will appear 38mm is much more of a standard we can go 38mm without too many issues at all um, I've been looking at aftermarket um, you can actually get race pipes and race systems and everything else for these they come in at 38mm so that's I think what we're going to go for what is 38mm in inches just out of interest uh, 38 it's basically one and a half inches isn't it ah see that will be why it's a little bit more common <laughs> right so inch and a half and just out of interest the frame that well there's 35 i mean you know we could kind of use the same die for an awful lot of frame construction see that 38 mil it would be a bigger radius obviously but I don't like these side bits and stuff anyway so the frame's going to be different but we could just reuse the die on bits here right so there's my outline of what the headers are doing so all I need to figure out is which die I need to buy to make a piece of tube do that <laughs> there's a whole load of ways of doing it um, these are basically a set of standards um, it don't matter what tube bender you buy you can get dies to do the same thing you can get you know custom bends and all that sort of stuff but there is like a whole series of these which kind of make up the standard dies and therefore standard bends um, pretty much across the board so there's a couple of places I get these from there's stakesies.co.uk and the other one is Tubella um and this is all for my uh tube bender which is a jd squared model three um so as a standard set of dies there's going to be one to do it because it's going to be a standard bend really so um the way that they're identified is basically three things um the first thing is what size tube is it going to take okay so what's the outside diameter of the tube that you want to bend? That's your first one. Second one is the center line radius. So center line radius, basically, if, if this is the pivot point that the whole die is going to move around like that, from there to the center of the tube when it's in the die, that is your center line radius, okay? And the last thing is basically um, most of these dies come in either a 90 or a 180 die. So 90 degree die, basically you get that <laughs> so you can make essentially a 90 degree bend or this is a 180 it's actually more than 180 um, this is the pivot point so if you were to put a rule across there you've got all this bit extra reason being is to make a 180 degree bend you have to over bend the tube so if you're going for 180 you might find yourself going up to 185 or what even 190 depending on the material that you're bending because um, as you release the pressure on the tube bender uh, having just bent it the tube actually springs back a bit um, depends on what material what wall thickness all that you know all that other sort of stuff um, mm -hmm. but you do need to go past the angle that you want to actually bend the tube to if that makes sense so easy way of finding out what die we need if you remember back to your school days you've got a circle okay um what you want to do is to you, you don't know how big this circle is you want to find the middle so you can measure you know the radius or diameter or anything else so an easy way of doing it is if you oh actually where's that other thing you can get um center finders for your rules and i've got one somewhere hang on a minute let me get that Where the bloody hell's that gone? I saw it. Right, here we go. Um, you can get these sets. 
So it's like a rule, you get like a, I use this one all the time, but that gives you 90 degrees and 45, that's an arbitrary angle. And you get this, which um, is basically a centre finder. So you can kind of put that on your, so this face and this face touches up to your um, circle that you've drawn. And just draw a line along there. Rotate it, preferably about 90 degrees if you can, because then it makes it a bit more accurate. Do another line like that, and that'll be the center point. You know, you can do that on the end of a piece of bar stock or anything else, but because that is a 90 degree and the rule goes straight through the middle, you can always find the center. That's the easy one. These little kits are brilliant as well. I think I paid like six quid for this. It's not amazing, but it certainly does the job. Um, if you ain't got one of them, another way of doing it is just to use tangents. So if you get a roll, ignore those lines for a minute. Um, but this, this is a method, I oh, actually might as well do it over here, I suppose. Um, this is a method which is kind of handy if you haven't got like much of a circle. You can still use that, but this is just another way in case you ain't got one. So um, the, the idea is if you um, draw a tangent to your circle, so just put a rule next to the curve, draw a line, do the same thing at a different point, um, and my circle is horrible. <laughs> then wherever they touch, there and there, just draw like 90 degrees to it. So with a square or the corner of a bit of paper or whatever, you put a 90 degree line on that one, 90 degree line on that one. See my circle wasn't brilliant. And where they cross, that's gonna be your center. So that's all we're gonna do here. So, uh, we do a tangent there. I'm gonna be going off the edge of my bit of cardboard here aren't I? And they basically touch there and we'll come up here do another one like that it touches about there see <laughs> we're so going off the bit of paper um, I've got stuff all over my bench anyway <laughs> Do another one like that. <laughs> right, so that's going to be the centre, that bit there, of that arc, right? Cool, so uh, we know we're going for 38 mil, um, which is basically inch and a half. So basically, That puts the middle point there. So the center line radius is basically from the center to that mark that we've just made. So that is what, 114 mil, 115, something like that. 115, what's that? Four and a half inches. Ah, right. So, they normally do dies in metric and imperial. Um, so what we're going to be looking at, if we go the imperial route, um, we are looking at one and a half inch tube. Um, in metric, that would be 38 mil. Okay, it needs to be a center line radius of four and a half inches if they do one at four and a half inches, um, center line radius, which is, I don't know, it's about 115 mil center line radius. And the other bit is 180 degree die, which is the same on both of them. So what I need to do now is go and have a look on 
either stakesies.co.uk or to pella.com, see what dies they do that closest match that, and see if I can get one that will do the job. And more importantly, find out how expensive it is. <laughs> <laughs> right, so I've just been on the websites and had a look at these. They do do dies to match this. Uh, well, pretty much. Um, in metric, your choice is, isn't 38, they don't do one. It's either 35 or 40. So we can't get a 38. Um, however, they do do an imperial one. It is one and a half inch. It is a four and a half inch center line radius and it is 180 degrees. Um, all yours for the princely sum of 329 of your English pounds. That includes the VAT. Okay, so I've ordered one, it's coming. So all Steve-O's gonna need to do is to get me a load of um, inch and a half tube. Um, this will do anywhere from, I think it's 1.5 mil wall thickness in mild steel um, up to a solid bar. <laughs> <laughs> the die in the machine is capable of doing it. I really wouldn't want to be bending an inch and a half tube in that though. That would be horrible. All right, another good little sanity check to do is I've just using my compass and a bit of cardboard, I've made a uh, inch and a half fake header. <laughs> and that's on a four and a half inch center line radius. And I just want to check it's kind of there which it is, that's fine. That'll do, that'll get us in the ballpark. General rule of thumb with all these two bending bits and bobs and stuff is that there is gonna be a limit to how tight you can actually get um, a tube to bend before it's all gonna start buckling and everything else. General rule of thumb is um, no tighter than um, three times the tube diameter for your center line radius. Because, you know, I mean, it does start getting proper tight and you're asking the outside material to stretch and the inside material in the curve to compress slightly. Do that too much and even though it's held in a die and a follower, you know, to actually form the curve, it will start to ripple and buckle. So there is limits. Um, you want any tighter than that, you're talking about doing pie cuts and stuff and I ain't doing that on this bike. <laughs> Right, it's just turned up. You see it? Yeah, that. I'm gonna need this. <laughs> Basically, it's a tube expander. Um, so you know like where you get um, slip fit cans and exhausts and everything else, you've got one tube and it opens up slightly and it slides over another tube. That's where these bad boys come in. Um, essentially, it's all hardened steel and everything else and you can see there's a cone here it's got flats on it that these wedges sit on I don't even see that but you stick that in the pipe or in the tube and then you turn this bit drives the cone in and those wedges expand out that's how you can expand a tube apparently never done it but we're going to give it a go and I'm going to need these when I do the collector anyway um, this goes up to 54 mil apparently I don't know what it goes down to, but I want to make it bigger, not smaller. <laughs> um, we are going to need them when we come to doing the um, collectors. Reason being is I'm going to have, um, I'll just try and draw this out. Um, if we have, there's going to be two bits of tube that come in like that and it will get cut off at an angle. And the other one's gonna come in here. Like that. So basically on the radius, we just shove it through the bandsaw and take the edges off. Then I can weld down here. But this bit, if you were to look on there, would kind of go like that. That's the worst drawing ever. And it also looks a bit phallic. <laughs> but this shape ain't gonna be circular. 
I've got some other steel there, um, other stainless tubing, which I think is 54. But I'm going to need to make this end a circle, like that. So I can then um, hook it up to the link pipe. So the idea is, it's all going to get welded up. And then I'm going to be shoving one of these in it. And I'm going to wind it out. And I'm going to stretch that so it's circular. And then I can stick my other pipe on the end of it. You know, the link pipe. Or at least to connect. I'm not sure if I'm going to do I don't think I'm going to do it as all one piece, obviously. Um, but I am going to need to connect that to a link pipe. So if I get that up to like 50 mil or something, then I can use one of these um, to stretch it up to 54 or something and shove a um, slightly smaller link pipe in and then we can go back to the end can. So they're more of a former really than that, you know, I'm not going to be full on stretching everything, but that's what they can do. Um, just hook a wrench or uh, an impact gun up to it. Jobs are good. Only cost 15 quid. Only cost 15 quid. Um, you know, I mean, it's it's never going to be the best for 15 quid, but as long as it does the job, I don't really give a monkeys. I've never used them, but we're going to give them a go. They could be dead handy. All right, so what can we start chucking on the bike? Um, might as well start at the back, I suppose, hey? Um, where's all this stuff? Right, so just throwing bits and pieces on the bike basically. Um, that is what the back end is going to look like. Everything is just done up hand tight. So imagine once it's all coloured in and everything else, it's going to look quite minimal. Nice little indicators on the end of that number plate bracket. Um, the angle of that is all at now kind of makes sense as well. You'll actually be able to read the number plate. <laughs> um, all the wires I've pulled through just to make sure you know, I can physically get them through there. That's all good. I'm going to need to sort out a couple of earth points in the back um, because the chassis on this is going to be the earth. So rather than have wires trailing everywhere up to the front and then going into an earth or anything else, there's just going to be earth in posts in various places. So, because we're running the M unit, which is there. Um, so basically I can earth everything through the chassis, which is all cool. Coming forward, you've got the ECU, we've got the M unit, the batteries there. Um, shove the calls on just to get placement. I do need to make some spaces up, 
but that's fine that's easy he's got some lovely hand controls look at these oh look <laughs> these are the bits he was terrified about putting on and scratching <laughs> don't worry steve -o, most of the scratches on it it's just going to buff out um horn i don't really want to see normally it'd be down here somewhere or something like up here um these brackets are going to go because i quite like the idea of being able to see the you know the frame spars and stuff um but i don't really want to see the horn what i'm thinking about is sticking it uh i'm not going to get my hand in there come on i'm thinking about sticking it up here somewhere so basically it's there <laughs> but you can't really see it so on the top um we've got this bracket here i'm probably gonna have this off the back of it give it all a good clean and a paint up and you know make it look presentable and stuff again then that is going to live underneath there um the wiring's all protected because all this front bit is boxed up anyway so the wiring will get a little bit of protection as well but basically it's going to sit underside of this piece like that so you can't see it from the side <laughs> So the idea is, and that's the horrible horn, which is going to get cleaned up or just replaced, but for now it'll do. Um, so we'll go on like that, actually. Yeah, you can go on like that. Um, this is the M button. Really cool little gadget. Really cool little gadget, actually. Um, essentially, it's designed for use with the M unit. So the green wire is the main signal wire all the other color wires basically plug into all your hand controls so that's you know your turn signals your lights your starter your horn all that sort of stuff um all hooks into this uh, m button and then just the green wire goes back and plugs into the m unit so you've only got one wire going back and that carries the signal for everything so i'm going to need to i found a p-clip i need to shorten it up a little bit but essentially the M unit is uh, the M button's going to go in there. We'll shorten this up a bit. He's going to sit on top of that um, that bolt, the mounting bolt for the for the um, horn, and then the whole lot just gets buttoned up and shoved on the frame. So let's get this on and see what sort of clearances we've got for all that stuff. So we can live in there like that. I can get to the connectors here. The M button will just sit on its P clip in here. Or I might even squirrel it up underneath here actually. Yeah, I could do that because then I can run a cable run down the sides. Um, from the side, uh, there we go. You can't even see it. So it is nicely out of the way. I do quite like the idea of that. But I just don't want to see stuff. I want the bike to be, you know, just plain and simple looking and minimalist so that's what we're going for right just having a bit of a tidy up because i've just noticed the time i've got to go well i'm going to be late for work and the gaffer won't be happy with that <laughs> at all um there are yeah don't need them all that all that So yeah, it's quite a few bits and pieces to be getting on with. 
I'm hoping he turns up with this steel or gets it sent down reasonably quickly because I really want to crack on with that exhaust. Um, it's going to be interesting to do. Um, you know, I want to try out that tube expander and, you know, new dye and all that other sort of stuff. It's ages since I was bending tube and that was quite a lot of fun. I do enjoy working it all out. So hopefully he's going to get this steel shipped down to me and we can crack on and we can get that done. That'll be sweet. Um, in other news, there's still loads and loads and loads of bits to go for. Not all this lot is not going back on the bike. However, um, I will show you his hand controls because they're quite nice actually. And they're going to work a treat with the M unit. Real simple looking. Um, black metal casing. Um, and it's just chrome with, you know, these push buttons and stuff. Some of them are momentary, some of them are two stage, but they're just real simple looking. All the wiring comes out the middle. You can poke it out through this hole and blah, blah, blah. But ultimately, I'm probably going to end up sending all the wiring through the handlebars, um, you know, through the clip ons um, to the center of the yoke and then squirrel it up underneath the tank somehow. Basically, I don't want you to see anything. I don't want wires trailing or Ozzy's like flapping about and all that sort of stuff. I want to keep the bike just mega clean and minimal looking. So that's what I'm going for. Um, quite how I do it, I don't know until we get to that point. Um, the headlamp was going to be coming off the, and I do want to come off the bottom of the top yoke just because more stuff clamping around the fork legs and stuff. I'm, I'm not a big fan of that. Um, school's still out on how I'm going to do that, but that'll probably be the job after that. So there's plenty to be doing here, and it's all little nadgery odds and sods. <laughs> Annoying stuff that should be dead simple, but I know he's gonna take a while. But there you go. So anyway, I need to chip off. Thank you ever so much for watching. Really do appreciate it. Loving all the comments and that as well. Um, you know, it's starting to look like a bike again. I'm enjoying this. This is the fun bit. So anyway, that's where I'm leaving it. Thank you very much. Hope you're all staying safe because it sounds like it's all about to go batshit crazy again. <laughs> well, certainly in the UK anyway. Um, so we could be heading for another lockdown. That'd be fun, wouldn't it? <laughs> Not. <laughs> anyway, we'll see you again next time. Laters!